Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Yeah, I love it. We, bo we both have our hands up. We're, we're ready to go. Um, thank you so much for, for being with us the, this morning slash early afternoon, whatever we want to call this time of day. Um, but my name is Justin. I'm on staff at Elm Street, and I am here talking with the lovely LaBorne Brown, who is in our upcoming production of She Kills Monsters. LaBorne, welcome. Hello. Glad to be here. Good. We're, well, we're so happy to, to have you here um, and be a part of this show and this production. Um, so I, I know a couple uh, spoiler alert things about, about you that you'll get to, to share with, uh, with, with the rest of the world, uh, not, you know, not too, uh, too far away. But why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Cool beans. Well, hi, I'm Edward I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, University of Alabama graduate. Um, I enjoy blues music and also jazz. I used to sing blues back in the day. I'm a bit of an oddball, and I love pretty much everything fantasy and also crime you are. Those don't really go hand in hand, but hey, I love them both. Nice. Um, okay, so fantasy, do you have like a favorite like, uh, like world? Um, in terms of uh, the, the fantasy genre? Mm, I really like, gosh, that's a hard question. Uh, you pick from, I, right? Yeah, so many I'd have to say I really like sort of dark fantasy. I've been really, and that kind of blends in with like the, it's easier to blend that with the crime you are, like kind of dark, gritty fantasy, vampires, werewolves, witches, all kinds of things. Yes. So Halloween, like you really enjoy then, right? Mm -hmm. Tim Burton, big fan. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love Tim Burton? <laughs> <laughs> he makes everything better. Just makes everything like very dark and, mm -hmm. and twisted. And you know, that that's fun, especially around Halloween time. Mm -hmm. So you said, um, you know, originally, you know, got a degree from Alabama about your theater experience and some things that that you have done and uh, experiences that you've had. Yeah, I started really doing anything theater sophomore year of high school. Um, I originally I moved with my family, so I ended up going to Paul W. Bryant. Before then, I performed before. I'd been in choirs before, and I've been with something called the Alabama Blues Project in Tuscaloosa. That's why I really ever got like my first taste of what it was like to perform on stage in like front of an audience and be more freer with it than just, you're in a choir, you're in a tuxedo and you're singing, there you go. Um, but um, ever since then I've been performing, I got bitten by the theater bug uh, sophomore year and I've been doing it ever since. I've been able to do quite a lot of few things at UA. I was in a production of Twelfth Night uh, freshman year after that, um, I did She Kills Monsters. I did a wonderful little show called The Liars that a friend of mine. Who um, are the liars guys? It's so great. I was Jovan. I just wanted grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also did um, a production of Linda Gary and Glenn Ross. I was Link. I was the sad sack. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Um, so do you have a favorite show experience um, or theater moment so far? Is there one that like stands out in particular to you? Yes. 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 I think I have to say, oh, wow, this, this is actually quite a, some of them don't even involve me. It's just things I saw happen. Um, um, we were doing a production of Oh, Mary Wise. It was, I think it was the last show I did before I graduated um, from college. We were doing um, Mary Wise and Windsor. And Libby was in it. At one point, I forget how, but her shoe ended up flying out into the audience. <laughs> and um, another friend of ours, Sam, at the time, he had to go in and get it. I just remember that that was, it was very funny. And the audience member got hit. Shoot, they were good for it, though. And no one got seriously hurt. <laughs> But it was a nice little front row improv bit that no one was expecting. It didn't involve me, but I thought it was really funny. I, yeah, I mean, anytime, like, yeah, stage mishaps are sometimes, like, some of the best 
uh, moments and like best memories that you have. Um, so yeah, no, I, I love that. And you said that you were, you've already been in a production of She Kills Monsters. And yes. this was the same one that Libby was in too, right? Mm-hmm, it's where I met. Very cool. So um, what role did you play in, in that one? I know the answer, but I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to believe this, but I played Chuck. Pronounce you Chuck. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I played Chuck my first time around. Uh, it was really fun. She Kills Monsters has a very special place in my heart. Even though I'd been in a show freshman year, sophomore year when I did that show with um, an honor society, Alpha Psi Omega, which I would later join, that to me feels like that was the first time the born kind of felt like he belonged in the theater department of a sorts. Like I, after that show, I felt a lot more comfortable and just in my skin and generally around people and you know i just i was able to loosen up a bit more like before then it was like we're here for a degree we're here for business no fun get that yeah. out of here but after that show i just remember feeling just a lot more comfortable just in where i was in life well good i love that um so you know doing it you know uh this time around have you you know, been able to explore like similar feelings of of that freedom or ha- have you taken on uh, the role in a different way or like with your interpretation? Like what, um, what's what's different? And I guess what what's also the same uh, this go around for you since you are, uh, you know, playing the same character? Mm-hmm. Uh, this, I feel like the, the feeling of freedom is still there because especially given the current time, it was just really nice to be on a stage. Yeah. To have that from that just that feel of wood under your feet, like that alone was just it was so great. But even looking at Chuck as a character, he, he is different than when I was sophomore year because I'm also different. So like it's it was really it was kind of strange. It's like he's kind of aged at the same time I have. And so like this Chuck that I'm looking at him now, it is vastly different than when I was in sophomore year. So that, that was also really cool and also fun. Like I, I love I love looking at it differently and doing it differently. It's no fun if I just do the same character again. So I'm I'm always happy to find a change or something something different to play with from the angle. Are you able to uh, maybe tell us something that we might see uh, in this go around of your interpretation of Chuck or maybe something to look for? Um, what to say without giving too much away? Right. right so, check mode on. Glasses off. All right. Uh oh, here we go. We, we here are we go. At, now we're at, at Superman. <laughs> <laughs> Something to look for for this particular Chuck is hmm. <laughs> perhaps a more more of a. I, well, I feel like a broken record now, but maybe more comfort in his own skin. Like, less, like, more aware of the fact that he's a nerd and the perception that that can, people have of them. The Laura's like, yeah, I'm this way. I know people think I'm this way, but you know, I'm just here to roll some dice and have some fun, change the lives, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. So, you know, you, you talked about that, that Chuck is, uh, you know, this this nerd character. So what role, um, pun intended, um, does he play in, uh, you know, in, in the world of the show for those, you know, who may not be super familiar with the script and the story? In the world of the show, at least within the um, adventure, he is God. But no, he, he's the DM. He makes the encounters. He, whenever there's an enemy, he would roll the dice and do they hit? Of course he did. Of course he does. Why would they? Um, but I mean, he's got great roles. But he, he plays the DM, the dungeon master. So he is the, the out of the adventure world. Outside of it, he uh, he's talking about we we've decided that he just he doesn't really work in a book a million, but he kind of he just kind of hangs out and like this where all the D and D little books and adventure things would be and like guys he just hangs out there. It doesn't work there, but he just hangs out, talks to people, tells them about D and D because he just he knows so much of it and he just loves 
sharing it and introducing all kinds of people to it that I've never played before. And if you want to play, he's like, come on in. I'll roll you a game real quick. Let's make you a character. But yeah, that's, that's, that's Chuck in a nutshell. Yeah, Chuck seems like a really cool guy. Like he's just like, hey, I'm here. Let's let's roll some dice. Let's play a game. Uh, let's have a good time. Do you have a lot of experience with D and D and the world of dungeon Dungeons and Dragons? Where, where do you fall? Um, uh, I, have, I have some experience. I've played uh, quite a few times. I've only DM'd once, actually. I, I did like a very short little dungeon. We had like three rooms and a final box. Um, but um, I played a lot and I, I love the game. And I, I love finding different forms of it. There's Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Starfinder, Vampire the Masquerade. There's, there's over a million different RPG type tabletops you can play. And it, it re- it's really got something for everyone. Whatever your specific like want is on the story or worlds you want, there's most likely a tabletop for you. That's, that's what I just love about the game in general. And is that something that you started uh, prior to being in your first go around of She Kills Monsters, or is that something you did to like prepare for your role? Uh, what 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 got you in, into the game in the first place? Um, it, was, it was She Kills. It was one time for a rehearsal. Um, anyone who hadn't played the game before, they had like a little short campaign. It was an edition, different edition at the time. Um, but um, they uh, had a rehearsal, we got together and we played a bit, and ever since then, um, I played. I didn't play for a while after that because just it's, it is kind of hard to get a campaign together, especially one that runs long and consistently, but since then, I have had at least two to three campaigns, two of which I think they come to like a definitive end, like this is, this is where you started, middle, and you beat the boss, yay! You live happily ever after, maybe. Someone probably died. Uh, but um, yes, I've, I've had at least two, three campaigns that have finished. Very cool. Uh, aside from, from D&D, are you, uh, do you like to play any other games? Mm-hmm. Are you a video yeah. like a game, like RPG kind of board game? What, uh, yeah, what kind of stuff do you like? Yeah, the board, I actually have quite a few friends that have gotten me onto board games. There's, oh no. Oh God, what is it? It's a board game. It's sort of Cthulhu-esque. Gosh darn it. It's gonna I don't know. Me. I can't help. I'm so sorry. No, it's gonna, it, I'm going to mentally kick myself later because I'm just going to, after this is over, be like, ah, oh, it's this thing. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> uh, but I can't. But <laughs> my friends have actually gotten me onto like sort of just actual like board games and things like that. I play video games not as much anymore but i still have an xbox one i like to every now and then break out the old and dragon age origin star wars like the old republic other rpgs and things like that maybe um but um yeah no i, I still like to game when i can i also try to make sure that i don't work myself to death <laughs> so yeah you gotta make sure that i have that break <laughs> yeah have a good good work-life balance for sure um Circling back a little bit to She Kills Monsters, so this show is very much steeped in in nerd culture and kind of, you know, really celebrating that and celebrating, you know, those interests that we have that sometimes we may feel like, oh gosh, this is, you know, you know, it's pretty quirky or, you know, um, you know, people might make fun of me because, you know, I, I like X, Y, Z. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how, um, kind of how you interpret the show and like how it speaks to, uh, to nerd culture and I guess the nerd within all of us? To me, it, it, it you know, as, as you said, you know, it, is, it does celebrate no nerd culture while also telling a very touching story about, you know, someone's journey. And just the fact that, you know, I, me growing up, and especially in, um, in Alabama and Tuscaloosa and going to UA, I, I got lucky. Like, being a nerd was, like, the norm thing <laughs> for the group of people that I hung out with. But She Kills Monsters is the way that, like, you know, if you don't have that, you know, if you if you go out or live somewhere where, like, being a nerd, you know, you, you get picked on or you get bullied, She Kills is like, hey, you know what? Who cares, man? Come on in. Hang out. Like, it really is a show where 
it brings all kinds of people together. And whether you're a nerd or not, whether you you never even heard of D and D maybe, or you don't even know what it is, you know, this show can can get you hooked on it because D and D in itself is just such a it's just something you created. Like it has building blocks where for the most part every D and D campaign it is from the mind of not just the DM for the players, because the DM makes the world, but then you know the players they change it as they go through and interact with characters and events within the world. So it it really is just this just this open slate where it can be whatever you want. I think you know she kills opens the door for a lot of people that don't know about that and they're like that sounds awesome. Why wouldn't I play this? Yeah. Is there anything, you know, without giving too much away, is there anything that you're looking forward to, um, you know, in particular with uh, with the production or, you know, things that you want uh, people to, to take away or get excited about? Mm, something that I, I know I'm looking forward to is the stage combat. I'm not even involved in a lot of it, but I love stage combat. I got my first taste of it when I was doing Shakespeare in a Park with a Shakespeare group called Blue Mechanicals back in Tuscaloosa. And ever since then, I, I, I love working with stage combat, especially rapiers. I, I really love rapiers. But something I think people can look forward to and take away from it is just the amount of fun, the amount of fun that everyone has in this show. And I think that, you know, that definitely will shine through as you know, people watch it and as just the story unfolds before them. Very nice. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to uh, like I've um, we we've been getting um, you know our some of our props come in um, with the different weapons and things like that. So it's always fun to to see like that Amazon package or whatever <laughs> come in um, with like a battle axe or um, things like that. So I'm. I know I'm very excited to, to see how those uh, play out throughout the show because I know there's there's some pretty intense and some pretty fun uh, fight fight sequences throughout the show, which I think is going to be uh, just really cool visually for an audience to see. Because, um, I mean, typically, unless you're doing like Shakespeare, like we don't get to see a lot of fight sequences um in like in you know contemporary theater um m you know most often uh, normally they don't you know include that in uh most most contemporary works so yeah i'm very much looking looking forward to that as well uh laborn before we hop off is there anything else you want to uh you want to add either about the show or you know just something random about about you or anything like that, a mix of the two? Um, you know, we'll, we'll throw in a, we'll, I have another thing, we'll throw in a random thing because we talked yes. about it earlier. And so something random that I did freshman year of college was, is that I gave the 300 speech to an army of Spartans. I could explain that another way, but I'm not gonna. So let me explain how that happened. <laughs> Um, it was part of an exercise in acting one where we had to pick a monologue or speech from a movie. For whatever reason, I chose the one from 300 from Leonidas. Don't really remember why. I might have just been really into the movie at the time. Um, but I, I, I picked that, memorized it, gave it. And uh, my teacher at the time told me to turn around. And I was like, oh, okay. Turned, I, she said, turn back around. She made everyone in the class kind of kneel as if they were holding a shield. I think they were a Spartan army, and then I gave the speech to them. It was really fun, and I, I that's one of my greatest memories from acting my earliest one, too. I think it was maybe the second or third class by that time, but I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but that's my random thing. The other thing is, you know, with the way the world is going and everything, I hope everyone is ready just to have a good time. I think, and don't get me wrong, Chico Vonson has its heavy parts. It does, but it's also just a really fun show, and it can it can really just put a smile on your face. And I think most importantly, right now, that's that's what we need the most. Just just something for everyone to smile about and get together, and you know, be in your feels a little bit, and just maybe remember that the world is not always on fire. <laughs> Yes, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, we we definitely need 
Well, we need, we need some more la laughing moments, and I I hope that She Kills Monsters will allow people to to have that opportunity to you know be able to sit back, relax a little bit, and you know just kind of get immersed in a story. Mm -hmm. So, Laborn, I want to thank you so much for for being here today and uh, getting to, to chat with me and you know being a part of this production. I know we're we're really grateful to have you uh, a part of this show, and we're very much looking forward to She Kills Monsters opening very soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Always glad. Of course. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And again, check out She Kills Monsters. It is mm -hmm. coming your way in less than a month. So please go and check it out. We're going to have some more details on the way about how we're keeping the theater space safe uh, and as well as some other um, options for you to enjoy the show uh, and maybe in a different way, okay? So with that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, Stay sane, and we will talk to you later.